everyone, congratulations for your new film, Good Boy. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I know. I, I watched it, and, um, you know, I should have watched the trailer because I had no idea what I was uh, about to watch uh, <laughs> um, for uh, for Good Boy. And this is this is quite a surprise. So... Let me let me ask uh, Villar first. Uh, where the original idea came from for this film? Um, so um, I uh, for many years I had the idea of a person in a dog costume, but uh, I didn't really have like a story around it. So it did take me some years to you know develop a um, a story, and I wasn't really sure what kind of genre it was because you can take it so many ways. I think you can take it a comedy route or perhaps a satire route or, um, you know, thriller route. But the, I first start, started out as kind of like a comedy, romantic comedy. And then uh, while writing it, it kind of slowly, while I went through the plot, it uh, slowly turned into perhaps something a little bit more sinister. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. Guard Kuchin, tell us why you wanted to board uh, this, uh, this very, very unique uh, project. Well, as you said, it's really unique uh, and it uh, gave a lot of opportunities to play around and uh, also talking to Vilja, he gave us a lot of freedom to come with input and be creative and uh, it also, uh, when I first um, get into this project and did the first round of the audition, uh, I thought it was a romantic comedy. Uh, so it was uh, a shock getting uh, to the second round and reading the whole script, but it was a pleasant surprise because then you can see also how Vilja is uh, uh, creative and how he is making something new and um, breaking boundaries. And uh, yeah, so I just felt that the energy here in the project was really appearing, uh, appealing and uh, gave a lot of opportunities to play and uh, yeah uh, learn as well Darn. yeah uh, I just have to add that I think it's really great that you didn't watch the trailer before uh, I always tell my friends and family well just watch the movie and then you can talk about it afterwards I think the, the trailer is amazing but me myself I, I also don't like to see trailers um, but answering your question I think I have a large appetite for challenges and things that are very far away. I'd love to uh, play characters and dive into the minds of people that are unlike me. And this was a great chance to work with people I respect. And I had a really fun time as well. So, yeah. Wow. So, so you're saying Christian is not like you at all. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I would say he's, he's pretty, pretty far away. Regard, <laughs> <laughs> um, Katrine, could you tell, tell us if you heard about Puppy Play before, um, you know, doing this uh, movie, or did you have to do some r real research into this? Um, for me, I, I think that, uh, I really like that I didn't know so much, because, that's all about Sigrid. She uh, she's getting put into a situation where she is uh, um, she is shocked. She doesn't know what this is, and it was kind of nice for me as well that I I didn't know that much. Uh, but uh, so yeah, but I'm not sure. Uh, it as um, Vilja and us have talked a lot about this as well. It is not. It's very specific the relationship uh, Christian have with Frank as well. So I think we could have done a lot of research, but at the same time we would not have understood this relationship. Uh, yeah, if that answered the question. <laughs> yeah. Oh, go ahead, Guard. Did you did you do any research into puppy play? No, uh, I didn't. I think uh, Catherine Louise answered it nicely that the relationship between Christian and Frank is something not based on um, necessarily puppy play. We wanted to find out what that relationship was for us and for the viewers. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
tell tell us about constructing this uh, costume um, for the Frank character in in this uh, in this film. How many variations did you have to go through? Uh, you know, we we did have some discussions. I think the biggest discussion was <clears throat> the mask because uh, <clears throat> me and the costume designer and uh, the producers um, we all discussed if. If if there should be a mask, or if if there should be a person in dog costume, and then kind of paint the face with makeup, uh, but I think the reason why we end up doing a mask is because you don't want to see Frank's expressions too much. You don't uh, you don't want the audience to be able to read if he's uh, scared or happy or uh, uncomfortable. I think uh, it forces the audience to kind of project their own uh, thoughts onto um, onto Frank, which uh, also makes him a little bit more creepier too, because you don't really know what uh, what the dog is thinking, especially in the first half. Um, so yeah, and then uh, it was also important that uh, we didn't look at any dog breeds. It was kind of Frank is just supposed to be Frank, so it's uh, the dog costume wasn't supposed to be too realistic. It wasn't supposed to necessarily look exactly like a dog. And more like an uncanny valley between, like a mixture between a dog and a human. So how how did you want to uh, direct a person inside a dog costume for mo most of the movie? I, I mean, I, I don't I don't see the practicality of uh, eating in a dog costume personally. Yeah, I think. Uh, there is perhaps some. Um... So when it came to directing of the dog, it, there were two actors for the dog. Uh, there's one who you know does the panting and uh, not to give too much away, but kind of plays the um, the person inside the costume, you can say. And then actually the costume designer, who's also the producer on the film, Marie, she actually played uh, the dog for. Uh, most uh, like had for the first half of the film when you, where you only see the dog, and the re and the way we shot it is that we um, try to film it uh, as fast as possible and in small increments, uh, so she didn't have to be in a dog costume for too much. Because what we kind of learned is that it can be quite dehumanizing being in that dog costume. Um, you kind of forget um, when you're interacting with the. The dog costume that there is a person in it uh, which is kind of meta because that's kind of what happens to the characters in the film and ho hopefully the audience in a way kind of forgets that uh, there is a human so um, we I feel like we kind of experienced what the uh, characters experienced when it came to the dog um, so yeah Sorry, Katrina Katrine, could you tell us about acting with uh, someone in a dog costume that must have been probably one of the strangest things you had to do in your career um yeah for me it it was really weird in the beginning because it feels it feels like you are breaking some personal boundaries when like patting a person on its head um uh and but at the same time that's marie or uh, uh she did consent to this uh, here in this film, but it was really weird, uh, like getting used to it. But at the same time, it was very, as Willia uh, also said, that it took so short time to get used to it, and and then it was not weird at all. So it was, it was so interesting to see how fast the brain can get used to something uh, as well. Uh, so then you have to remind yourself in a way that this is not normal. Uh, we have to actually talk to the person inside. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, <clears throat> I think um, one of the wonderful things about being an actor or actress is doing so many strange things. This was one of the strangest things I've done as far Um and I think for me personally, there was something really off-putting about the, the costume and the whole concept, the eyes that kind of stare into your soul, the yellow uh, eyes, uh, which never blinks. Uh, and I, I took myself in, in also needing to establish trust between the actor inside 
uh, but also trying to convince myself as being the character that this was something that I loved uh, and felt safe around because it was always kind of an eerie thing about it, really. Wow. Gar Gertrude, tell tell us about the chemistry between you two for this film because uh, because there's a notable chemistry and both of your characters changed over time and there's still that chemistry between your two characters. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I think the chemistry is really important and I think we we kind of lucked out because me and Katrin Louise uh, we really liked spending time with each other having a lot of uh, great chats outside set and just trying to to work with the energy that were we represented as the characters and it worked really well i loved playing with katrin luisa because she's so eager to learn and to uh, give um, uh, experiences and and sharing and i felt really safe working with her so for me, it was a great experience. And as for the character, I think Christian works for being loved and he needs to be loved and wants to give love as well in his way of thinking what love is. Um, maybe tipping over to a point of control or something else. And the more he loses it, the more desperate he becomes to, to get it. So uh, that was quite interesting to explore. I just have to say that I agree it was really, really inspiring working with Garth as well because he's so dedicated and uh, so it's easy to work with someone when they are so good and they really want the best out of the scene as well. So I really felt also that we, we worked good together and uh, wanted to push each, each other to make the best work and uh, and also having Vilja support. Uh, so it was a really, really nice experience. And I think that as God was talking a little bit about uh, that, I think both of the characters are seeking love and connections, but in very different ways. So having, I think they are connected uh, even though they're quite different. Uh, Sikrib with her bubbly energy and uh, God, who, uh, <laughs> God no, Christian. <laughs> Uh, who is uh, the opposite in a way. Uh, but I think that since they connect in this goal, I think it's also easier to connect as uh, yeah, the characters and as uh, human beings as well. Wow, that's wonderful. We are, I, mean, I, I do have to ask her, you guys cooked so much food in this uh in this film, uh, tell 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 us about the dishes that you, you wanted to present and uh, and and what the practicality of what you were feeding the so called dog in, in your in your movie. Yeah, I think um, you know the dog. You know the food was kind of a nice way to represent where kind of where Christian and like his a kind of nice way to re represent his. Uh, a relationship with the different characters um so that was very important for me to uh, to kind of show the dishes uh, and i have it as like a motif throughout the film um it's funny because you know especially in the first scene that was um when uh, that lo quite long sequence uh, of just making the steak that was just me asking guard can you make a steak? And he said, yeah. And then we just shot it. It didn't really give him any directions. It was just him cooking it up. Um, but yeah, there's, uh, you know, with the feeding of the dog, there is some, perhaps some suspension of disbelief you have to have there because the practicality of uh, the dog costume and eating is, um, I mean, uh, it, it kind of works, but I, I think that... <clears throat> It's, uh, you know, it kind of doesn't work like in practical, but I also think that proves kind of the um, um, the acting and the, that's being done with the different characters um, and how it, without giving too much away, how the situation you first is being presented uh, isn't really real mm. um, without giving too much away. 
Most excellent. Well, let, let me wrap it up with one last fun question, and then I'll open it up to all three of you, is that if if you perchance dated a, you know, someone, that, a character just like Christian and, and you met a human dog, would you immediately leave that date instantaneously, or would you stick around and try to find out more? I think I'd uh, actually... Yeah, I think I stay. I think uh, you know I see a lot of people say that uh, th they would never, uh, they would just leave immediately. But I think uh, you know us as Norwegians, we're kind of scared of uh, conflict. So I think most Norwegians would kind of just uh, at least uh, stay for the date and then just leave. But I, th I think yeah, I'd be you know if the date were somebody I was interested in, you know, if was. Um, uh, then I think I'll uh, I'd uh, be intrigued by uh, by the by the dog, as long as nobody gets hurt. You know, it's uh, you know people should be allowed to do whatever they want. The dream guard. <laughs> well, uh, I think it's like there is something. Uh, I think uh, I'm very interested in in like different people and different stuff. So I think I might be more intrigued by this prank or this dog that I would like can can I chat with this person or that um so I think I would have stayed just to understand more uh because yeah because it's so uh yeah intriguing in a way but uh I could also see why people find it scary uh, but I think that the shock factor is why people are I want to leave, but uh, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a hard question, though, because I've never been in such a situation before. But uh, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think I would have stayed and asked questions, lots of questions. <laughs> God, last words. I think uh, my preferences as within dating is different than as a friendship. I think I would be more open-minded in learning more as friends. But if this was a person that I was involved with dating, one part of me would ask for the bathroom and head for the door. But also, it depends on the situation. And I also think uh, it depends on whether you want it to be similar to this movie or not. So I'll leave my answer kind of open with the with the afterthought that I, I am an open-minded person. <laughs> <laughs> well, strange as that may be, it probably happens somewhere around the world. So who, who knows? Everyone, congratulations uh, for our good boy. Thank you very much uh, for carrying this uh, wonderful conversation about good boy, about everything and, and the uniqueness of this film. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Nice talking Thank to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye now.